All right, folks, we're back with another uh, reaction video, and this video, like, just dropped. I just got the notification that this dropped, and I think this is on um, the Fat Electrician's second channel, The Fat Files. So, um, The Fat Electrician, Ryan's going to do all the magic and have uh, his channel linked in the... Um, description of this video so you can go back and if you haven't clicked or liked his videos you need to click over there and check him out and subscribe to him because he puts out some great stuff this is brand new content that i've never seen before and we're going to check it out and see now i'm doing my best to watch this i, I got to tell y'all something this studio setup that ryan has in here is a little bit different for me one I'm looking at a screen and I, I want to do this to it because it's vertical. And then over here on this screen is the big screen where I don't have to have my glasses on. I can see what I'm doing. Um, so a lot of times you see me looking over here and I'm not looking at the camera. That's because I'm not looking at my little, um, my little image that I can see now in here that he's got me set up just because it's smaller. Um, but let's check out the uh, fat electrician and his new video. Just once in my life, I would like to go to the internet with a question and have my question answered without falling into an enormous rabbit hole of government conspiracies and nonsense. Okay, long story short, Toyota's got this new truck coming out. It's just a flatbed, plain Jane work truck, nothing fancy about it. And it was supposed to be like 10 or $11,000 brand new. So naturally, I wanted one. So naturally, I go to the internet with a simple question. Am I going to be able to buy this new Toyota truck in America? To which I am met with the answer, probably no. not. Most likely for the same reason you can't buy a Toyota. Hilux, which is the other thing that's been pissing me off for 10 years inside of America. And naturally, in the back of my head, I just kind of assumed like, oh, Toyota just doesn't want to sell that truck in America for some reason. Maybe the money's not right. It costs too much to import, whatever. And yeah, it does cost too much to import, but it's because of chickens and Lyndon B. Johnson. That's why. What's that? <gasps> Nick's so mad he forgot to send me a segue for the ad. <laughs> that means we got to do it, right? Yeah. <laughs> I I don't know what that was. Um, play, play the ad. <laughs> and I can hear the comment section already. Buh, if you want a Hilux, just get a Tacoma. They're basically the same thing. Buh. No, they are not for multiple reasons. For one, I've driven a Tacoma and it is literally the slowest moving vehicle I have ever driven in my entire life. That thing accelerates from zero to 60 in like three to five business days, okay? <laughs> Fucking Fred Flintstone would beat that thing in a drag race. Secondly, I don't vividly remember being 14 years old watching Top Gear with my dad and seeing those guys drop a fucking Tacoma into the ocean for eight hours, fishing it out and then getting it started in like 15 minutes and then because that wasn't enough to kill it they decided they were going to hit it with a wrecking ball drive it through a building light it on fire and then stick it on top of a skyscraper before blowing the entire building up with it and then the motherfucker still started okay Tacomas are not on the same level as Hiluxes I don't care what you say you will never convince me otherwise it is the equivalent of my mom trying to convince me that store brand toaster pastries are pop tarts no they're not pop tarts are pop tarts <laughs> and pop tarts are fucking awesome awesome and you want to know why i can't get my metaphorical pop tart why i can't own and drive my own toyota hilux yes. it's because america was too good at selling chickens in the 1950s and 60s yeah that's why Okay, so here's the deal. Generally speaking, throughout the majority of human history, chickens have always been like super expensive and seen as only something that rich people got to eat until very recently, which think about it for a second. It starts to make a little bit more sense. You have like cows and goats and llamas and whatever other fucking farm animals you have. And they just basically wander around and they eat the grass. Okay, that's not very expensive. Then you have pigs. You can literally just feed them garbage and they'll turn it into bacon somehow through evolutionary magic. Chickens, on the other hand, you have to like feed them grain and like actually give them real food that a human could technically eat. So historically, Historically speaking, they've always been one of the more expensive farm animals, so only rich people got to eat them. Then in the 1950s, after World <laughs> War II, thanks to refrigeration and a couple of other innovations, America got super, super good at raising chickens. They got so good, in fact, that we could raise chickens, slaughter them in America, ship them across the fucking ocean while refrigerating them, and sell them in Europe, and it was still cheaper than people could grow and raise chickens in Europe, so Europe was eating a bunch of American chicken. So they had too much cock? I guess that's one way to put it. Why? <laughs> Just never thought I'd hear that come out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> never 
Anyways, this goes on for a number of years in the European countries, primarily Germany was spearheading this entire thing. They get together and they're like, hey, let's put a 25% tariff on American chicken coming into the European market. That way European chicken is more competitive. And if that wasn't enough, they started a major propaganda campaign, basically saying that America fills their chickens full of antibiotics and growth hormones. So it's really unhealthy for people to eat, which I mean, honestly, that's, that's, that's probably a fair assessment, but regardless, America. <laughs> Yes, uh, in those grow houses, that is a fair assessment. Those chickens, uh, they bring them in as uh, biddies and bring them in six months later. They're slaughtering them, and that's what you're eating. And they're they're giving these chickens steroids so they get those big breasts. I always want to find that chicken that looks like a squab, that looks like uh, a scruffed up, hadn't had any anything done to enhance its growth cycle or speed it up is now pissed off so this is 1962 when this european tariff on american chicken passes and for the next 18 months it is the pinnacle of american politics trying to get europe to buy more american chickens and it becomes known as the chicken war right in the middle of the cold war i'm not even exaggerating there were literally american politicians that cared more about getting europeans to eat more chicken than they did about the pending nuclear war with the soviet union should have sent him a chick-fil-a Germany, conrad adnar said that he had more conversations with jfk about germans eating american chicken than he did about the pending nuclear war there was a senator from arkansas that was sitting in a nato meeting when he stood up interrupted the entire nato meeting and declared that america was going to withdraw from nato and europe could defend itself if they didn't lift the sanctions on american chicken obviously that didn't actually happen despite that the tariff ended up staying up and after 18 months of trying to diplomatically solve this issue then president lyndon b johnson is like fuck it i'm just going to put a tariff on you guys too and he put a 25 percent tariff on potato starch dextrin brandy and light cargo vehicles now obviously chicken is a food product which they are tariffing so america is going to tariff dextrin potato starch and brandy which are also food products that part makes sense but why on earth is america going to start taxing light cargo vehicles well you see that's where the good old-fashioned political corruption comes in because it's 1964 it's an election year and the uae is about to go on strike the united automotive workers union and them going on strike during an election year is going to be disastrous for lyndon b johnson's chances of getting re-elected so lbj and the president of the uae come to a little quid pro quo agreement in exchange for the uae not going on strike during lbj's election lbj is going to abuse his political power to make sure that somehow some way so many volkswagen type twos which are incredibly popular in america right now quit getting imported aka the love bus you know you've seen those this is where they went they went away because of this so this is why light cargo vehicles gets added to the chicken tax adding a 25 percent tariff to basically make it so that germany can't import the type 2 now light cargo vehicle at this point in time is defined as two seats or less and designed to transport cargo so then because of that all the foreign auto car makers like toyota and honda and all the other ones that make small trucks not wanting to pay a 25 percent tax to import their trucks start importing the truck itself like the chassis and the cab and the motor all completely built in their country and then they ship over the bed separately and then they have a warehouse where they like throw a couple of bolts on and attach the huh. bed so that way it's assembled in america and they're only going to get taxed four percent instead of 25 percent because the u.s government is this fucking stupid so then in the 1980s the u.s government closes that loophole to which all the other auto car makers are like fine we'll just exploit another loophole we'll just start adding more seats so that way there's more than two seats so it's not a cargo vehicle it's just a normal vehicle and this is why every small to mid-sized truck 1980s through like the early 2000s had those tiny little seats in the back that no human could ever actually fit on Correct. because they were never actually designed for people to sit on they were just there so that they could legally say oh it's designed to sit more than two people therefore i get taxed at four percent instead of 25 percent again because the government is dumb which fun fact this is also why the subaru brat had those stupid plastic seats in the back and then they came out with the cafe standards which is basically like trying to you know save the environment with emissions and stuff and the rule was the vehicle has to be like proportional compared to how much emission that it emits i guess so like if a truck is really big it can emit a bunch of co2 into the atmosphere but if a truck is really small it's not allowed to emit a bunch of co2 into the atmosphere and this is actually why all the trucks in america are fucking ginormous <laughs> lately in like the last 20 years okay i know that's like a super popular thing to bitch about like you hear a bunch of hippies and college kids bitching about how american trucks are too big and it's more dangerous and they're taking up space on the road and they're beating up 
about the infrastructure. Yeah, it's because of stupid fucking emissions policies, because it's easier for automakers to just make the truck physically fucking larger than it is to make the emissions <laughs> somehow magically lower. So that's why that's happening. So not only is the cafe standards not helping with emissions and CO2, it's actually incentivizing automakers to make trucks unnecessarily ridiculously large just so they can comply with this law. And I know what you're thinking. Well, at least the chicken tax is helping American automakers compete in the market so that they can make no. more money and stay in business. And that's that's just not the case anymore either because even they're getting fucked over by this law because when Ford tries to import transit vehicles, which they have made over in Turkey, they have to intentionally put extra seats and windows and shit inside of it, import it, and then send them to a factory and have and all the seats out. and windows <laughs> taken out and convert it back into a fucking cargo vehicle. <laughs> this is why all the transit vans and shit that are super popular are really fucking expensive. And this is why my work that I work at to be an electrician can't ever find a goddamn transit van to use as a work truck because A, they're getting way more expensive because we're having to import them with extra seats so they're not cargo vehicles because somehow that saves money. And then my boss is definitely really trying to compete with all the fucking millennials that want to go live in a van and start an Instagram so they can have hashtag van life in every fucking picture they post. This hey, policy hey, is literally helping nobody. Hey, nobody on the planet is benefiting right now except for maybe the government so that they can get more tax money over fucking nothing, okay? Potatoes, Dextra, and all that other shit. All that shit's gone. They're not tariffing that anymore. That tax went away. It's just on cargo vehicles now, and it's for no reason. And you're like, oh, this fucking fat electrician guy's just misrepresenting the entire situation because he's angry that he can't own a Toyota truck that he wants. No, that's not it. In 2003, the Cato Institute researched the entire thing. This is 21 years ago, by the way. They did all the research and they came to the conclusion, and I quote, the chicken tax is a policy that is in search of a rationale. There's no fucking reason for this law to exist other than to fuck people over. I have literally spent the last three days of my life successfully wrapping my entire brain around this issue and come to the conclusion it's so fucking Fucking stupid that it's driving me insane. This is literally the epitome of government intervention. What's the problem? Oh, Germany's not eating enough American chicken. Don't worry, the government's gonna step in and help. Fast forward <laughs> 70 years. Guess what? Germany's still not eating enough American chicken, but you're not allowed to own a Toyota Hilux either. Oh, good. I'm literally getting cock blocked from owning my dream car. Thank you. I'll be honest, I don't even understand how I got here. Like I just I woke up one morning, there was like, oh hey, Toyota's coming out with a new truck that's gonna be super cheap and cool. And I'm like, oh, I wonder if I'm gonna be allowed to buy. It. And next thing I know, I'm fucking the internet's crazy uncle on Thanksgiving somehow. I just, <sighs> I need a beer. Okay, this is this is too much. I gotta go. Thank you for watching. Best way to support the channel is go buy some merch over at thefatelectrician.com. Quack bang out. <laughs> I am going to figure out a way to get a Toyota Hilux at this point. It's gonna happen. <laughs>